It is a Monday as we kick off our third week of the season of Epiphany. We're going to continue these daily prayers. Hopefully you're catching the routine by now. I'm starting to get that that feel for the way it works. And you know, we're, they say it takes about 28 days for something to become a habit. So if you've been in here for the long haul, we're about halfway there. I uh, hope your Monday goes great. Uh, stay warm out there. And let's pray. I will give you as a light to the nations that my salvation may reach to the end of the earth. Lord, open our lips and our mouth shall proclaim your praise. Glory to the Father and to the Son and to the Holy Spirit, as it was in the beginning, is now, and will be forever. Amen. Alleluia. The Lord has shown forth his glory. Come, let us adore him. Please join me in Psalm 119, verses 89 through 96. Your word, Lord, is eternal. It stands firm in the heavens. Your faithfulness continues through all generations. You established the earth and it endures. Your laws endure to this day, for all things serve you. If your law had not been my delight, I would have perished in my affliction. I will never forget your precepts, for by them you have preserved my life. Save me, for I am yours. I have sought out your precepts. The wicked are waiting to destroy me, but I will ponder your statutes. To all perfection I see a limit, but your commands are boundless. A reading from the first letter of Paul to the Corinthians. Follow the way of love and eagerly desire gifts of the Spirit, especially prophecy. For anyone who speaks in a tongue does not speak to people but to God. Indeed, no one understands them. They utter mysteries by the Spirit. But the one who prophesies speaks to people for their strengthening, encouraging, and comfort. Anyone who speaks in a tongue edifies themselves, but the one who prophesies edifies the church. I would like every one of you to speak in tongues, but I would rather have you prophesy. The one who prophesies is greater than the one who speaks in tongues, unless someone interprets so that the church may be edified. Now, brothers and sisters, if I come to you and speak in tongues, what good will I be to you? Unless I bring you some revelation or knowledge or prophecy or word of instruction, even in the case of lifeless things that make sounds, such as the pipe or harp, How will anyone know what tune is being played unless there is a distinction in the notes? Again, if the trumpet does not sound a clear call, we will get ready for battle. So it is with you. Unless you speak intelligible words with your tongue, how will anyone know what you are saying? You will just be speaking into the air. Undoubtedly, there are all sorts of languages in the world, yet none of them is without meaning. If then I do not grasp the meaning of what someone is saying, I am a foreigner to the speaker, and the speaker is a foreigner to me. So it is with you. Since you are eager for gifts of the Spirit, try to excel in those that build up the church. This is the word of God for the people of God. Thanks be to God. So in the last week, we've talked a lot about spiritual gifts in the body of Christ. And Paul is taking that discussion even further for us here in today's reading because we're continuing on in this letter to the Church of Corinth. He explains that there's two types of spiritual gifts. One type... That helps the individual in their own walk with God, and another type that is given to the individual, but it's to benefit the whole body or the whole church. Neither one is bad. They're both gifts. Speaking in tongues is a gift, and he even says that he wishes everyone would have that gift. But even more so, he wishes everyone would have prophecy because that's something that helps everybody. Along our spiritual journeys, there are going to be times where God's going to give us things, whether that be, you know, some wisdom or a revelation or uh, some, some gift like this that helps us in our own walk. And those are a little graces, little mercies for us as we go along the way. But there's also these gifts that he gives to us that can help the whole body itself, whether that be music or art or teaching, uh, even, you know, working in medical fields and science, the things that that help build us up as human beings and as followers of Christ as a whole body, these things that we can cultivate and and give back to the body of Christ. And he's saying that most of us, you know, will have multiple gifts. Uh, we, we seem to think sometimes the spiritual gifts is one thing, but most people have more than one spiritual gift. And so it's a matter of finding what are those that were given to you for your walk and what are those that were given to you to give out and to benefit everybody. So uh, find those things that set your soul on fire, that really get you excited about life and about God and about 
uh, just getting out there and doing this life thing. Uh, find that thing, cultivate it, and then, you know, start, go on this journey with God to see how that gift can be used for the benefit of everyone. Because in my experience, if you just go on the journey with God, He's probably going to impress you. Amen. Gentle God, let us set on your lap and learn your ways. Teach us how to walk with our brother Jesus and show us how to live in your wise spirit. Amen. May you find those spiritual gifts given to you by the Spirit, and may you find how they can benefit the whole body of Christ. And it's through our resurrected Christ, I pray. Amen. Have an awesome Monday. Go do this life thing. (laughs) 